when I go down the interstate at 75 miles an hour, I should get 300 miles of range. So talk a little bit about why that's not true, Sebastian. Yeah, so ultimately, this a lot of this comes into, until very recently, the EPA testing was, the EPA testing is not in the environment of you doing a constant speed on the interstate, right? The EPA mm -hmm. testing favored pretty heavily on city driving where vehicles typically are more efficient. And so when you're driving at a constant 70 miles per hour, you know, you have a lot of, there's a lot of aspects to go into. A, you're just kind of delivering a constant stream of power to, you know, propel, propel yourself, also fighting wind, you know, and all this other stuff. And because of that, you should just know your EPA range and your actual real world range are probably not accurate. And it goes both ways. You know, if you're, if your EPA range is 300 miles and all you do is drive at 35 miles per hour in a city, stop and go all the time, you might be able to get 400 miles on a charge. Mm -hmm. Who knows? I don't. Or if you live at the top of a mountain, yep, you might be able to beat that because you're going to region, you know, region yeah. all the way down the mountain. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, you know, it's your EPA range is in a perfect kind of environment situation, right? And recently the EPA testing has actually gotten more strict, uh, more strict. So on newer model year vehicles, like we're talking 2025, 2026 model year and newer, we're actually starting to see um, vehicles actually meet EPA range. Not yep. every time, but we're actually seeing it or they'll get pretty dang close. And we've seen vehicles actually beat EPA range by a decent bit as well. Yep. The new Porsche. Because... Yep. Because the testing has gotten more strict to kind of try to meet that more realistic worldview.